could be ringing the church bell at this time. Maybe it ain't an oo, Father. Maybe it's an it. And maybe it's tolling the bell. Ah, oh, there's no such things as ghosts and monsters. Haven't I made that clear to you? Something tore the throats out of Charlie Rousseau's sheep. And that something didn't leave any tracks. Andy Trent here saw a weird glow moving across the marshes last night. And this morning, he found two of his sheep dead. Their throats torn open. Maybe the same thing that killed Andy's sheep is tolling the bell. I was on my way just now to deliver a special letter at Penrose Manor when a strange light appeared on the road before me, then moved quickly across the marshes and faded into the mist. I turned the cart around and hurried back here. It's not real. First the light and now the bell. There's a very sound and logical reason for the bell tolling at this time, and I'm going to find out what it is. You can drive me to the church pots. The letter can wait. No hurry. Nothing will harm you if you're with a priest. Is that true, Father? Ah, what you need is more faith and less imagination. Come along. to the manor. I'm sure it's important. that bell has stopped. Odd, it's tolling at this time of night. I don't like it. What with this phantom roaming the marshes? I saw it again tonight. Who would that be?
Where's Lord Penrose? He's gone to Quebec. Get him on the phone immediately. What's happened, Father? Lady Penrose, dead, clutching the bell rope, calling for help. It was dreadful. Her ladyship. Call Sergeant Thompson at the police station. Ask him to come to the church immediately. Come with me, Potts. I will need you. Yes, Father. Operator, put me through to Quebec. Lord William Penrose. Yes. He's addressing a meeting of the Royal Canadian Occult Society at the Quebec Hotel. It's urgent, sir. Page? Yes, sir? Lord Penrose. Lamont Rouge is on the telephone. It's urgent. It's in the gold room. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, as you know, the greatest obstacle in proving the authenticity of the occult lies in finding facts. However, if the facts are there, even the most hardened skeptic, provided he has an open mind, must finally acknowledge the actual existence of the supernatural. Do you admit that, Mr. Holmes? Facts are always convincing, Lord Penrose. It's the conclusions drawn from facts that are frequently in error. Yes, in the case of the Hound of the Baskervilles, as well as in the adventure of the Sussex Empire, we found Watson, that... please. Oh, sorry. Well, gentlemen, this time I have facts. Cold facts. Many years ago, 100 to be exact, an apparition appeared at night in the village now called La Mort Rouge. The following morning, three people were found dead, their throats torn out, hence the town's rather grim name. Interesting, yes. But facts? No. I hardly think the tales of superstitious peasants can be considered... I haven't finished, Mr. Holmes. La Mort Rouge has again been the scene of these strange and unexplainable occurrences. Unexplainable, that is, from your point of view. Several of our most responsible citizens have actually seen the strange apparition on the marshes at night. And next morning, sheep were discovered... With their throats torn out and no traces of the killer anywhere to be found. Oh, you've read about it in the papers. Oh, as a matter of fact, I haven't. It was merely a deduction. A rather obvious one, I'm afraid. Deductions are a weakness of mine, as Dr. Watson can tell you. <laughs> Would you believe it? Holmes can... Well, those are facts, Mr. Holmes. Ignore them if you can. But it's very urgent, sir. Okay, well, go ahead. Thank you. I never ignore facts, Lord Penrose. And I have no doubt that the incident of the sheep with their throats torn out is unquestionably a fact. However, the interpretation of this fact as being final proof of the existence of the supernatural is merely supposition, and therefore cannot be accepted without further data. Your opinions, Mr. Holmes, are undoubtedly the result of your inability to cope with something beyond the realm of your comprehension. I so, man. I'm sorry, John, but this ridiculous skepticism. Yes, what is it, my boy? La Mort Rouge on the telephone, sir. Very urgent, my lord. Excuse me, gentlemen. I, I'm afraid, Lord oh, Penrose... quite understandable, Sir John. Lord Penrose is deeply entrenched in his beliefs. That's his privilege. Well, hang it all, Holmes, the fellow is positively rude. Well, shall we see a little over Roth, Watson? <laughs> I'm leaving immediately. Order my card, Watson. Hurry. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, my wife has just been found dead. Her throat torn out. In exactly the same manner as the sheep. This is terrible. I say, you don't think that it's... Undoubtedly, Mr. Holmes, you would call it murder by person or persons unknown. I'm sorry. If I can be of any assistance... Thank I... you, no. I'm afraid the happenings in La Mort Rouge wouldn't address you, Mr. Holmes. Uh, under the circumstances, I think we should adjourn. Yes, indeed, Sir John. Sir Holmes, what a terrible thing. Now, Sir John, would you be good enough to convey our condolences to Lord Penrose? Yes, I'd be glad. Can't we get something to eat before we leave? You don't often get food like you do here. Don't you ever think of anything else besides your stomach? No, not often. Well, there you go. I'll get a paper. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I imagine you'll be glad to get back to London, Mr. Holmes. Yes, indeed. Oh, oh, by the way, there's a letter for you, sir. Thank you. Oh, here's something about Lady Penrose. She was found in the church with her throat horribly cut. Evidently dragged herself from the marshes nearby and tried to summon help with a bell rope. What's it? What is it, Holmes? Listen to this, Watson. Huh? My dear Mr. Holmes, I have every reason to believe my life is in danger. Yet, if you were to ask me how I know, I couldn't give you a logical answer. There is nothing tangible, yet like a...
terrible premonition. It is all so frightfully real. I heard of your being in Quebec, and I'm turning to you, a stranger, and asking your help in the frantic hope that you will not fail me. Oh, who's it from? It's signed Lillian Penrose. Lillian Penrose? Lady Penrose? A letter from the dead woman? Or what does it mean, Holmes? I should say that Lady Penrose lived in fear of her life. Some secret hidden in her past, in all probability. Oh, perhaps it isn't as simple as that. What if, uh, if Penrose is right? I'm glad we're going back to London. Things like that can't happen in Baker Street. Oh, it's a pity, Watson. Huh? Do you know a village by the name of La Mort Rouge? Uh, yes, sir. It's about 12 miles from here, up towards the falls. Thank you. Great Scott Holmes, you mean you're going to take on the case? Quite. Telephone the airport and cancel our reservations, will you? Certainly, sir. Consider, Watson, the irony, the tragic irony. We accepted a commission from the victim to find her murderer. For the first time, We've been retained by a corpse. So it seemed to be a bell. Never mind, come along. Do you think we should? Cheerless looking room. for this intrusion. Would you mind, gentlemen? Mr. Holmes, is it your custom to burst into people's houses without ringing the bell? We couldn't find the bell, sir. If you've come here to use the death of my wife to prove your theories, I must ask you to leave. Penrose, I received this letter from Lady Penrose this morning. Devilish awkward. I'm afraid you're a little late, Mr. Holmes. My wife's dead. And I've come here to find her murderer. You might have saved yourself the trouble. I'm convinced that the solution of this horrible deed lies in an understanding of psychic phenomena. Although I don't expect you to admit that, Mr. Holmes. I assure you, Penrose, I neither believe nor disbelieve in anything, including psychic phenomena. If I could just see Lady Penrose, it might help dispel much of the mystery that surrounds these happenings in the moral. Drake, why don't you answer the blasted thing? Sergeant Thompson has charge of the case. You'll find him at the police station. And now I must ask you to go and take your assistant with you. You'll excuse me if I don't show you out. Drake! Drake! Drake, where are you? Before. Right, Watson, you have. Yes, but where? Never mind that now. You must examine the wound before Penrose returns and has us thrown out of the house. Clumsy job. Just missed the jugular vein. I must have bled to death. Had a bled for several hours, eh? Possibly more. Long enough for Penrose to leave La Mort Rouge and reach Quebec in time for the meeting? Holmes, you, you don't suspect I Penrose. suspect nobody, Watson. I was just asking a question. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. There is another who desired the death of her ladyship. I saw it last night in the fields, moving in and out of the shadows. You're the butler, aren't you? I was the butler. I've given notice. Drake! Get out. Get out of this. I 
trust you found what you were looking for. Two things have been made clear to me, Penrose. That your wife was murdered and that she's Lillian Gentry. Lillian Gentry? Will you leave or must I call the police? That will not be necessary. We're on our way to the police station now. The wounds found on Lady Penrose's throat are identical with those found in the throats of the dead sheep. Now, I'm not a superstitious man, Mr. Holmes, but I don't know of any weapon capable of inflicting such wounds, except an animal's claw. Of course, it could be done by a five-pronged garden weeder. Not that garden weeder, Mr. Holmes, that's mine. I use it to weed the garden at the back of the jail. I'm inclined to agree with the Sergeant Holmes. A weapon such as that would have severed the jugular vein and death would have followed immediately. Lady Penrose lived long enough to drag herself to the church and toll the bell in a frantic effort to call for help. Yes, yes, I, I know all about that. But there must be some logical motive instead of all these uh, goblins and monsters. Sergeant, have you ever heard of uh, Lillian Gentry? No. No, I can't say that I have, Mr. Holmes. She was a famous actress who came to America some time ago. She appeared for many years in the United States and Canada. Then suddenly she disappeared. Her disappearance was never explained, and she was soon forgotten. But uh, what's the connection between Lillian Gentry's disappearance and the death of Lady Penrose? Lillian Gentry and Lady Penrose are one and the same person. The same person? Precisely. One more question, Sergeant. Do your files show anyone with a prison record living in La Mort Rouge? No, Mr. Holmes. The only person having any connection with a prison is Emile Journet. He came here two years ago with his daughter and bought the hotel. He was a guard at Talon Prison. Thank you, Sergeant. I hear there are a lot of prairie chicken in these parts. I'd like to have a bag of them someday. I think that can be arranged, though. Yes, we can stop over the farmyard and you can shoot all the chickens you want. That's all we'll follow home. Here you are, old fellow. We're going to engage rooms at Mr. Journey's hotel. Landlord! I say, landlord! They seem deserted. Won't be for long if you build it like that. Landlord! Sorry, Holmes got to try and make someone. Yes, monsieur. My dear, have you got a room for us? Yes, monsieur. Good. Sign here, please. Now I'll sign for us both. Oh, thank you. You seem very young to be in charge here. Yes, monsieur. You are Mademoiselle Journet? Marie's your name, monsieur. My dear, you've been crying. Why? Papa's going away. Oh, come now. Is that such a tragedy? Would you cry if your papa were going away, Watson? I don't believe so. This way, monsieur. Bring your bags, oh, Yes, of course. <laughs> Wouldn't I be unhappy if my father were in the See my father's here. My father died about 20 years ago in Cheltenham. That's the way it goes, Emil. It costs money to be born, and it costs money to die. Do you know Thank who that was in the car? Him. It was Sherlock Holmes. He's here now. What do you think he'll find? Ghosts and monsters. What else is there for him to find? There's no I don't know. You're afraid, Emil. Of course I am, and so are you. Who isn't? Why should Sherlock Holmes come here? To investigate the death of Lady Penrose. What else? I'm afraid Mr. Holmes will return to London a sadder, but a wiser man. Why do you say that? Well, you can't arrest ghosts and monsters, can you now? <laughs> well, I'm on my way. The mail must be delivered. Some talk of every some of That's better. This room gives me the creeps. It is very seldom used, monsieur. It isn't often that strangers come to Le Mans Rouge, and when they do, they never stay. I can't say that I blame them. Will your father be away for long? I... I don't know, monsieur. Now, where is he leaving? I don't know. Marie! Uh, if you need anything, just ring, monsieur. That girl's frightened, Holmes. Obviously. She made the mistake of telling us that her father was leaving. Huh? You... You don't think that Journey... Suppose we have a little talk to Monsieur Journey. It might prove illuminating. 
Didn't I tell you not to answer any questions? Yes. Didn't I tell you to keep a silent tongue in your mouth? Yes, Papa. So you told them I was going away? Yes, Papa. Oh. I'll teach you to keep your mouth shut. Monsieur Journet, just why are you leaving La Mort Rouge at this particular time? I'm not leaving. What gave you the idea that I was? Your daughter? My daughter is mistaken. I merely said that I would like to go away. I've just been teaching her the difference. Yes, so I observed. But I can't say that I approve of your method, sir. I'll ask you to mind your own business. Run along, dear. Oh, there, my dear. Disgraceful hitting a child! Monsieur Journet is quite right. It's none of our business. Uh, Monsieur Journet, what do you know of the death of Lady Penrose? Only what everyone in the village knows, that she was killed by the monster. Have you seen this monster? No, but who else could have done this terrible thing? Sheep have been killed, their throats torn out. You were a jeweler at Talon Prison, weren't you? Oh, yes, monsieur. Why did you decide to come to La Mont Rouge? Well, I always wanted to own a hotel, and I heard this one was for sale, so I bought it. That was two years ago? Yes. I believe it was about the time the monster made his reappearance, wasn't it? Do you suspect me of being a monster, Mr. Holmes? No, 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 no. I was just remarking a coincidence. I thought you didn't believe in those things, Holmes. Quite right, Watson, I don't. At least, uh, not in the supernatural variety. Not the werewolf who bites into his victim's throat with his teeth. But, uh... A monster who uses for his weapon of death a five-pronged garden weeder... Yes, that's a little more in my line. I... I don't know what you mean. I mean that this monster's been recreated and used as a screen behind which to commit a horrible crime. Whoever did it felt certain that no suspicion could possibly fall on him. But my unexpected arrival upset his plans. Very possibly he became frightened, decided to run away. You're right, monsieur. I was running away. But not for the reason you think, but in fear of my life. And who would want to kill you? I don't know. It's like some terrible premonition. But it's so real. The very word, it's in, in Lady Penrose's letter. Yes. That still doesn't explain this garden weeder. I swear to you, I know nothing about its being here. Haven't we better send for that fellow, Sergeant Thompson? No, Watson, that won't be necessary. Monsieur Journey knows as well as we do that you can't run away from yourself. Oh, uh... Would you be so good as to return this to Sergeant Thompson, monsieur? I took it away, quite by accident. Monsieur Journey knows as well as we do. You can't run away from yourself. This fellow Journey seems a very frightened chap. Do you think he'd have any connection with Lady Penrose's murder? Time will tell us many things, Watson. And now, my dear fellow, there's something you can do for me, if you will. Anything, Holmes? I knew I could rely on you. I want you to mingle with the people in the cafe tonight. Find out all you can and keep a particularly sharp eye on Journey. But you sort of take over the case. That's right, old boy. I want to get a good night's rest before starting out again in the morning. Oh, and incidentally, uh, make yourself as inconspicuous as possible, will you? Inconspicuous? You can, uh, you can depend on me. Glad to see that the tears are all gone. Are you feeling better? Thanks to you and Mr. Holmes, Papa's not going away. Not going away? Oh, good. Journey, not going away. There are many phases of the supernatural, Mr. Drake. Witchcraft, vampires, werewolves, ghosts, monsters. 
You'll find them all in the history of crime. So I say to myself, Potts, this is the handiwork of the supernatural. <clears throat> I, uh, I gather that your name is Potts, and that you're interested in the detection of crime. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Watson, Dr. Watson of 221B Baker Street, London, England. How do you do, sir? Here's the crime. Bigger and better crime. I deduce, my good man, that you're somewhat drunk. Yeah. Sharp he is. Sharp as a tack. And just as flat-headed. You might also deduce that I'm leaving this place. Getting out. As soon as the bus I'm waiting for Hoots, it's Hooter. I believe they say honks, it's Hooter in these parts. Hoots to me, honk to you. Hoot, hoot. <laughs> my dear fellow, I don't care two hoots whether it's Hoot or honk. Uh, uh. Oh, that's my bus, gentlemen. I just heard it Hoot, it's Hooter distinctly. If you solve this case, let me know. Personally, I'm betting on the monster. You take my advice, Patsy. Get out of this place before they find you with your throat cut. Hoots! It's Hooter. Nervous? Well, the thought of having your throat torn out by some monster isn't likely to make you very gay, Dr. Watson. Mm, no, indeed. Some of Monsieur Journey's excellent wine will soon remedy that. Marie, would you bring a bottle of this excellent wine for my friend here? Yes, Monsieur. Mr. Potts, as a student of the occult, supposing you give me your theory of, of this murder. Mm. You like this wine? <laughs> oh, but Dr. Watson, I never drink anything stronger than milk. Teetotaler? No, hiccups. Every time I drink alcohol, I have hiccups. Mm. Sorry. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. This circle is where the murder actually occurred. Uh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. There's a footpath just beyond the church which leads across the marshes. Follow it for half a mile and you'll be there. Thank you, Sergeant. I'm sure I'll find it. Uh, Mr. Holmes, I wish you'd let me go with you. It's dangerous on the marshes at night. These swamps, the one false step... I'm sorry, Sergeant, but it's important that I go alone. I'll keep close to the path. Well, will Dr. Watson be going with you? No, Sergeant. I asked him to do some research work of his own, and by now he's probably magnificently involved. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Holmes. But according to your theory, Dr. Watts, everyone in the village is under suspicion. <laughs> Pardon me. It's quite all right. Oh, th thank you. Murder is, is a very interesting story, gentlemen. I will recall a short story by that brilliant author, G.K. Cheston, in which the murder is committed by, by a postman. I, I refer, of course, to the invisible man, a brilliant bit of deduction on the part of Father Brown. I'm a postman. <laughs> Precisely why I meant to, to illustrate the absurdity of assuming because one man in a postman's uniform is a murderer, any other man in the same uniform should be, should be suspected. Thanks. Had me worried for a minute. No, Paul Filthy flabbed it up. A child can see that this ridiculous monster has, has got you all afraid of your own, your own shadow. I saw Lady Penrose. I wouldn't like it to happen to me. I'll be getting on. I'm going with you. Good night, Doctor. Good night. It's right on.
so strange about a church bell ringing. It rang the same time last night. Excuse me, Dr. Watson. Can you tell me if Mr. Holmes is armed? Armed, oh, my dear fellow. Why should he be? He's gone to bed. You're wrong, Doctor. He went out in the marshes alone. I tried to go with him, but he refused. But, Great Scott, if he runs into this monster and he's by himself, he'll get killed. Good gracious. Come here. Your instructions were to mingle with the people and stay in the cafe. Sergeant Thompson said you, you were out here alone, so I, I thought you might need help. Yes, so you proceeded to fall in the bog, eh? Fall? I was pushed into the blasted thing, pushed by the most ghastly apparition. Came at me like a, like a roaring furnace, with spitting fire in all directions. Before I could get my revolver, the, the thing was upon me. With the next thing I knew, I was, I was in the bog. Are you all right, Mr. Holmes? I heard shots. Yes, I'm all right, but Dr. Watson here seems to have encountered the monster. He has? <coughs> Come on, old fellow. We'd better get you out of these wet clothes and into a hot tub before you catch a death of cold. <coughs> yeah, you've had enough of that. Drink this. You'll be as fit as a fiddle in the morning. Well, oh, you had such a bad time. I got a right to share your dangers. Thanks, old fellow. You know, I wasn't sure the villagers weren't right. And if it did turn out to be some sort of supernatural monster, well, why should I involve you? Rubbish. However, I did learn something. I can now state positively that our antagonist is not a phantom. But the thing actually spat flames at me. All just a figment of your imagination. The murderer knew I was out on the marshes and obviously wanted to frighten me. You frightened me, all right. How do you manage the flames? Merely clothing, treated with phosphorus. When the murderer fled, his shirt caught on a tree, and uh, this piece of cloth was torn off. <coughs> Come in. I'd like a few words with you, Mr. Holmes. I'll come directly to the point. <coughs> Hello. What uh, happened to your assistant? I'm not his assistant. If you must know, I was pushed into a boggy hole on the marsh. Pushed? By whom? I don't know. Spat fire at me. My good sir, in spite of Mr. Holmes's theories to the contrary, things have been seen and heard on those marshes that cannot be explained away by the use of logic. If I were you, I'd keep away from them. I'm not so sure. Holmes found... Now, Penrose, for the first time in my long pursuit of crime, I confess that I find myself baffled. I'm a detective. I need tangible clues. And up to now, I admit, I, I found none. And you won't. I advise you to leave La Mort Rouge. Tonight, you escaped with your life. Next time, you may not be so fortunate. Thank you for your considerate advice, Lord Penrose. Good night, sir. Excuse me. Oh, good night. I don't like this fellow, Holmes. Why do you think he came here? He wanted to find out if we discovered anything. He seemed very pleased when I told him we hadn't. Now, Watson, there are one or two questions I want to ask Sergeant Thompson. 
You stay here. I have a vitally important job for you. Anything, Holmes? What do you want me to do? Go to bed. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, it's cotton fabric. Yeah, take a look. That discoloration, the purple ink must have been spelt on it. Possibly. I should say this cloth was red with blue lines. Probably large checks. Yes, it seems to have been laundered a good many times. The blue lines are almost completely erased. Yes, you can scarcely see them. It's good fabric, well woven with a solid base. Hello, Bill. Hello, Sergeant. Your phone call must have been important. You bring me over this time of the night. It was. This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He wants to ask you a few questions. This is Mr. Taylor, the storekeeper, Mr. Holmes. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, sir. Have you any shirts of this design? The squares are red and the line's blue. Yes, I have. Can you remember to whom you sold them? I can. I keep them in stock specially for Judge Brisson. He won't have anything else. Judge Brisson? Who's he? A retired magistrate. He's a cripple, lives alone with his housekeeper. Have you sold any of these shirts to anyone else? Uh, no, sir. They're too expensive for the village and the boatman. This is the finest material. Import it. You say Judge Brisson's a cripple? Yes. He was a magistrate in Quebec. Had a stroke about two years ago. That's why he retired and came here to live in Le Mans Rouge. Just about the time that Monsieur Journey arrived here. Now that you mention it, it was just about then. <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me Judge Brisson's home, will you? Thank you. Answer the phone at night. Yes, sir. Well, then obey my orders. Yes, sir. Hmm. No answer. Where do you live? Uh, on the Marsh Road. But I don't advise you to go there after dark, Mr. Holmes. The place is a fortress and guarded by a savage dog. I think um, Dr. Watson and I will have to pay Judge Brisson a visit in the morning. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, good night, Mr. Holmes. on the door. One of them knew. Yes, I should say that Lady Penrose's death had increased Judge Brisson's terror. <coughs> Don't like the sound of that dog. No, it sounds hungry. Possibly rabbits. Couldn't we come back after he's had his breakfast? I'm sorry, Watson. Our business won't wait. Oh. Stop now. Yes, Watson. and Dr. Watson. I telephoned Judge Brisson we were coming. You can't come in. He's given orders no one is to be admitted. You wouldn't want Judge Brisson's death on your hands, would you? No, sir. Then you'd better let us in. I'll probably lose my job for this. Not after we've talked to Judge Brisson. My good woman, you, you keep an eye on that dog. Oh, don't worry, Watson. You know as well as I do. The dog won't touch you if, you, if you're with its master or mistress. Well, you know it and I know it. You're quite sure the dog knows it. Good dog. Happy dog. Nice, Winnie. Good, good. Good, Winnie. Let me warn you, I'm armed. And I'm an expert shot. We didn't come here to harm you, Judge Brisson, but to protect your life. I told you over the phone this morning, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, that I did not want to see you. I don't want to see anyone. But I want to see you. Stay where you are. Nora, show these men out. Judge Brisson, if you'll answer a few questions, I may be able to save your life. I have the fullest confidence in my own defenses. And I will not trade them for any theories of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. However plausible you make them sound. Now get out, will you? I'm sorry. Under the circumstances, I'm helpless to prevent your death. Almost certainly by violence. Come along, Watson. Oh, pardon me. May I trouble you with that envelope? I must have dropped it. Thank you. You're a very clever man, Mr. Holmes. A crude device, Judge Brisson. 
but it's confirmed my suspicions that you're not the cripple you pretend to be. I'm sorry. But I'm frightened of everything and everybody. I... Why don't you sit down? You want to get shot, Holmes? Come in, Watson, close the door. Sit down, old fellow. Judge Brisson has decided not to shoot us. Oh, very kind of him. Gentlemen, this fear is driving me mad. It's quite understandable. The whole village seems to be consumed with fear. But in your case, uh, judging from your vicious dog, those barred windows and that hunting rifle, it's not fear of the supernatural. Just what are you afraid of? Well, truthfully, Mr. Holmes, I don't know. And yet I feel its very presence. At times, I feel I can almost reach out and touch it. When I first came to La Mort Rouge, I had a slight attack. It, it affected my legs, but... Well, I've recovered. And you've continued the deception, using the wheelchair as an excuse for not going about the village. Well, you see, people would be more inclined to, to, to accept my hermit-like existence. Yes, naturally. Tell me, Judge Brisson, had you ever heard of Monsieur Journet before you arrived at La Mort Rouge? No. No, I hadn't. How many, um, how many of these shirts has your housekeeper purchased for you? Oh, four or five. I, I'm not positive. I... You still have them? Well, one or two became... Badly worn, and I, I told my, housekeep my housekeeper to give them to a man who was doing some work for me at that time. Can you describe him? No, I'm afraid I can't. That was about a year ago, you see, and, uh, well, I didn't pay much attention to him. He worked in the garden. Could your housekeeper remember him? No, that was a different housekeeper then. She went to the United States. Try to remember, Judge Brisson. Your life may depend on it. I do remember one thing. He had a very slight limp. I used to watch him from that window as he walked across the lawn. Splendid. Continue your vigilance, Judge. And under no circumstances allow anyone to enter the house, even someone you may know well. well what's that mean, Holmes? Maybe nothing, Watson, and it may mean everything. I'm quite sure that Sergeant Thompson will have observed a man with a limp in a village the size of La Mar Rouge. Good day, Judge, and thank you. Good day, sir. I'm sure Sergeant Thompson will have observed a man with a limp in a village the size of La Mar Rouge. This is what's left of the Delaporte Hotel, Mr. Holmes. Dana sleeps here when he's in La Mar Rouge. Spooky old place. The villagers call it the ghost house. It's been deserted for years. Sergeant, footsteps have a characteristic rhythm as identifiable as fingerprints. got back tonight. You're lying. You go and frighten me. But now I've got a job to do. It's quite evident that you haven't been on the river within the last 48 hours. Are you trying to make me out the murderer of Lady Penrose? How do you know she was murdered? I'll tell you how you know she was murdered. Because you murdered her. Holmes, look! In there! The monster! That's right, Watson. One of Brisson's shirts, which Tanner here treated with phosphorus. Take him, Sergeant. I'll give you all the evidence later. Look out! Oh! You got him, Sergeant. I'm sure of it. Come on.
I see no reason why we shouldn't leave for home tomorrow. So much for tomorrow, but for tonight... What do you make of this, Watson? I found it in Tanner's room. Just a photograph? That's right, old boy, just a photograph. Do you notice anything else about it? Part of it's missing. Bravo, Watson! Now, if we can find the missing half, Notice the discoloration of the torn edge, faded signature. The upper half was torn off some time within the last year, I should say. Why all this fuss about no photograph? Watson, have you ever stopped to think that the science of detection is very much like stringing a handful of beads? I can't say I have. Well, it is. And in this particular case, you might say that I have five beads. Journe, Brisson, Tanner, Lord and Lady Penrose. So far, I haven't had any thread to string them together. This, gentlemen, is our thread. And I think I shall start with Lady Penrose. But Lady Penrose is dead. The dead can tell us many things, Sergeant. You and Dr. Watson remain here at the hotel. I'll meet you later. <laughs> I'm sure you got Tanner, Sergeant. But Mr. Holmes is never satisfied with a dead criminal. He has to sit in on the post-mortem. Come along. Let's go downstairs and celebrate the death of the monster. <laughs> That's a good idea, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> So the great Sherlock Holmes becomes a common thief. You realize, of course, that I might have shot you. I knew that you'd refuse to see me, so naturally I had to take that chance. Tell me, who is Alistair Ramson? What has he to do with your being here? Perhaps this will explain. I found the lower half in a room occupied by a boatman named Tanner. The upper half was in Lady Penrose's safety box. Alistair Ramson murdered a fellow actor in my wife's company. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. The whole thing was a great shock to her. So she retired from the stage and you married her shortly after? Yes. Where and when was this murder committed? In Quebec, five years ago. Ramson was shot three years later trying to escape from Talon Prison. His body disappeared in the St. Lawrence. Was it ever recovered? I don't believe so. Penrose, Alistair Ramson and Tanner are one and the same person. What? It was he who sent the upper half of that photograph to your wife as a warning. What could my wife have in common with a murderer? Yet he killed her. He killed her? Yes. The monster was none other than Tanner himself. We found a shirt impregnated with phosphorus in his room. Tonight, when we faced him with the evidence of his crime, he bolted and jumped out of the window into the river. Sergeant Thompson fired a couple of shots at him. He's, uh, he's dead? In a way, yes. I don't understand. Tanner is dead only because he was discovered and have therefore outlived his usefulness to his creator. But I'm afraid that Alistair Ramson, the actor who created and played the part of Tanner, is very much alive. But surely, now that you know who the murderer is, the police... It was not quite as simple as that. During the time he's lived here, Ramson has undoubtedly established another character for himself, perhaps several others, who are by now familiar to the people of the town of La Mont Rouge and quite above suspicion. He could be almost anyone in the village. He may even have been your butler, Drake. This is fantastic. Yes. Yet Lady Penrose's death is only the beginning. There's no saying where this madman will strike next. Tell me. Is there anyone else in Lamar Rouge who may have been connected in any way with the case of Alistair Ramson? Judge Brisson was the magistrate who tried and sentenced him. Operator? Operator, give me Judge Brisson's home. It's urgent. Judge Brisson, this is Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I'm quite all right, thank you. I chained up the dog as you asked. As I asked? I haven't telephoned you before. Somebody's obviously imitated my voice in order to gain access to the house. It was 
Most certainly, Mr. Holmes. I'll lock all the doors and await your arrival. Yes. Nora! Nora! If I can be of any assistance, Mr. Holmes. Uh, thank you, but I'm afraid you think Judge Brisson's life's in danger? I only hope I'm in time to prevent a second murder. Mm. Show him in. Monsieur Journey's Café. I want to speak to Sergeant Thompson. It's urgent. Sergeant Thompson, this is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a Judge Brissons. He's been murdered. Judge Brissons been murdered? Judge Brisson? The murderer gained access to the house, gagged and bound the housekeeper, then disguised as Nora, murdered Judge Brisson. I'm returning to the old Delapont Hotel on the chance that he'll go there to change his clothes and assume another disguise. Ask Dr. Watson to meet me there as quickly as he can, will you? You'd better come here at once and take charge. Right.
Throw your revolver on the floor in front of you and raise your hand, Sherlock Holmes. I should have thought you would have felt more at home in the spotlight. I see you finally identified me. You know, Jack Tanner and Nora the housekeeper were brilliant. You should really take a bow. It's too bad you appeared on the scene when you did, and I had to ring down the curtain on the monster. Your recreation of the monster of La Rouge as a means of murder must have given you great satisfaction. Why did you kill Lady Penrose? I see no reason why I shouldn't tell you. I couldn't bear the thought of another man possessing her. And Judge Brisson? During the trial, I grew to hate him. And when he sentenced me to prison, I vowed that someday I would escape and kill him. I see. Obviously, you plan still another murder. Otherwise, you'd have returned to the safety of your first disguise and defied me to find you. You're right. I am. There were three people in my life who had no right to live. Two have already died. The third remains. Tonight, I shall kill him. Mr. Holmes, I've always had the greatest admiration for your talents. Thank you. Your performance in this case has also been brilliant. So brilliant that I'm afraid I'm going to have to ring down the curtain on it a bit prematurely. Uh, Mr. Ramson, we are artists in our fashion, not creatures skulking in alleys. If our positions were reversed, I shouldn't think of sending you to your death, lacking a few stray pieces of the puzzle. What do you want to know? The name of the third person. I have no objection. If there is a hereafter, which I doubt, you and he will meet very soon, Mr. Holmes. The name of the third person is... Coming, Holmes! Look out, Watson! Watson. Where is he, Holmes? He's gone. Thank heavens you're safe. Thank heavens you came and you did. There it is, Watson. Look out. So you got away again? Yes, Watson. Over that warehouse roof, most probably. What a fun little roof. Yes. This is obviously the secret room where his disguises were created. Looks like an actor's dressing room. He is an actor, Watson. One of the finest acting talents of our time. Look at this. Nora, the housekeeper. His name's Alistair Ramson. Alistair Ramson? Never heard of him. No, that's not important. The important thing is that he murdered Lady Penrose and Judge Brisson. Great Scott, he did it. Yes, Watson. This Ramson is a paranoic. His orgy of crime is not complete. There's still another. I was just about to learn his name when you so conveniently fell down the stairs. Oh, sorry, old chap. Be old boy. You saved my life. Look at this, Watson. Tanner. Tanner. Hmm. Where do you think he'll strike next? Obviously, Journey is to be his third victim. Journey? Yes, Watson. As in the cases of Lady Penrose and Judge Brisson, Journey also felt his presence. But in each case, it was vague and unexplainable. Well, what connection can he have with Judge Brisson or Lady Penrose? Johnny was a guard at Talon Prison, where Alistair Ramson was confined. He's the third person against whom the murderer holds a grievance. Now he's disappeared. Johnny disappeared? Well, so Marie told us in the cafe. Watson, Johnny's disappearance can mean only one thing. He's in hiding. Our job is to find him before Ransom does. Johnny is the only man who can lead us to the murderer. We'd better have a talk with little Marie. Have you seen Marie? No. Have you seen her? No. Can't say I have. Marie! Watson. Oh, 
What is it, huh? I'm afraid we're too late. Marie. Don't touch anything, Watson. Well, in exactly the same way as Judge Bisson and Lady Penrose. Poor innocent little child. I should have prevented this. Nonsense, my dear chap. You did everything possible. How on earth could you have prevented it? Child's death is a tragedy, of course. I see exactly what happened. She was standing here by the desk, and the, the murderer came in by that door. He came in through that door, but Marie was not in the room. She alone, of all people in the cafe, saw Ramson enter this office. It was someone she knew well. Someone who might have a message from her father. So she followed him here. And when she refused to tell him whether her father and Gunny killed her. Ramson already knew that Joni had disappeared, but he didn't know where. When he questioned her, she became suspicious, and it was then that he killed her. Telephone Sergeant Thompson, will you? And this is Judge Prisons. Ask him to come here at once. And since no one leaves the cafe until he gets here, the murderer may be among them. been away all day. It's very unfair of him, keeping me in suspense like this. He knows how worried I become. He continues to do it, and do you know why? He actually enjoys making me miserable. Half a mole. No good, Watson, it won't work. What won't work? to every place where Shulnay could possibly be in hiding. Well, that's where you've been all day. Yes, Watson, and I must admit that I'm completely baffled. We've got to find Shulnay before it's too late. But how? I've been everywhere within a radius of five miles of this village. I've even been to the church in the hope that he'd disguise himself and attend mass. He may have gone to Quebec. Every road's covered. He hasn't left this vicinity, of that I'm certain. All right, I'll answer it. Hello? Hello? Who was it, Holmes? Watson, get your hat and coat. You're very rude, Holmes. You leave me all day long with that very dull inspector. I ask you a perfect polite question, and all you say is, Watson, get your hat and coat. We're going to find Journey. Sergeant, you wait here till I call. Watson, yes. do this. Watson, do that. Watson, get your hat and coat. Watson, do that. 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 Certainly not in the very house in which he's just killed one of his victims. Johnny! Johnny! It's Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. We are here to help you. to help you. How did you know I was here? When you called your hotel just now, I answered the telephone. The chimes of Brisson's clock here merely confirmed what I already knew. You must return with me to the cafe at once. I am not leaving this house. The murderer is waiting out there in the marshes to kill me the moment I leave here. Naturally, but first he must have the opportunity. If you return to the cafe, he'll have that opportunity. It's the only way we have to apprehend the murderer. What if I refuse? Your name? What I have to say to you is not going to be easy. Marie. What? Murdered. Now you know why you must return. This fiend must be brought to justice. Justice? 
This monster kills my poor innocent child, and you talk of bringing him to justice. Will that compensate me for the death of Marie? If it's the last thing I do, I'll kill him with my own hands. You can't take the law into your own hands. Once you've returned to the hotel, he'll make an attempt on your life. Then we'll get him. How will we know who he is? You already know. It's his disguise that we haven't penetrated. Who is he? Alistair Ransom. Recognize the name? He attempted to escape from Talon Prison when I was a guard there. Shawnee, if you don't want to remain in hiding for the rest of your life, you must return to the hotel and help me to put an end to this monster for all time. Come. Let's go. Good. Put an end to him. How are you going to do that, Holmes? I'll tell you both about it on the way to the hotel. So you're really leaving, Doctor? Yes, Sergeant. Gentlemen, Mr. Sherlock Holmes and I are leaving immediately for London. It's extremely regretful the murderer has escaped us, but all our cases cannot be crowned with success. I'm extremely sorry, gentlemen. Have you no idea where this fiend has gone? Uh, Mr. Holmes is of the opinion that he's escaped across the border to the United States. It may be years before we can trace him, if ever. Oh, Jenny, just a minute. Uh, our bill, please. Bill? Yes, Mr. Sherlock Holmes and I are leaving immediately. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Watson. I'm just on my way to the church to offer a prayer for Marie. I'll forward your bill to you. Yes, of course, my dear fellow. I understand. We'll leave our address at the desk. Goodbye, Mr. Potts. It's been a great pleasure knowing a man of your intelligence. Thank you, Dr. Watson. It has been most stimulating talking to one of your vast experience. Oh, thank you. Let's hope that we shall meet again someday and continue our little chats on crime. It would be most exciting. Oh, by the way, Mr. Holmes would like to see you for a minute in his room. Yes. I'll show you where it is. Well, it's the second room on the right up there. Thanks. Emil, it's me. But do you mind if I walk part of the way with you? It's a bit frightening out here. It's these marshes. This is almost the very spot where Lady Penrose was attacked. Three deaths in three days. It's a pity Marie had to be killed. She was such a sweet child. Three deaths in three days. And still one more to be accounted for. You were frightened, Amy. It's strange to see you showing fear. The man I hated to tell in prison. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Yes, Mr. Ramson. So you see the final curtain has not fallen after all. I thought you were on your way to London. Naturally, that's what I wanted you to think. That's why Dr. Watson announced our departure in the cafe. Journey's leaving was purely bait to bring you into the open. I merely replaced Journey once he was outside on the street. May I say, Mr. Ramson, that your disguise as a postman it was a masterpiece of ingenuity. Your very choice of the role put you above suspicion. It was quite easy. I simply disposed of the real Mr. Potts after he had passed his civil service examination and had been assigned to La Mour Rouge. You realize, of course, that you'll never hand me over to the police alive. It's not my function to be your executioner. My duty is to hand you over to your authorities, which I fully intend to do. You're an optimist, Mr. Holmes. Oh, not necessarily. We're surrounded by police awaiting my signal.
I've killed him. With this. Ransom's instrument of death has been his own executioner. Well, gentlemen, our search for the monster has ended where it began, on the marshes. Hey, Watson? Watson, where are you? Why isn't he here? He was with us a minute ago. Watson! Here, here I am, Holmes. Where are you? I've, I've fallen in another hole. <laughs> I should like to have seen a bit more of Canada before we sailed, Holmes. So should I, Watson. Canada. The linchpin of the English-speaking world. Whose relations of friendly intimacy with the United States on the one hand, and their unswerving fidelity to the British Commonwealth and the motherland on the other. Canada. The link that joins together these great branches of the human family. Churchill say that? Yes, Watson, Churchill. Mm -hmm.